All right. Down here in the bottom right, our red Terran from Korea. He is... EG Allied Raid Call from America. Well, like qualified from America, but he is from Korea, I guarantee. Up here in the top left, our Zerg player from Germany. He is... Liquid TLO from Europe. Okay, so, you know, this, I personally, uh, from a Zerg perspective, don't like this map against Terran. Now, against Alive, I think there's a possibility for TLO to maybe take the map, because he likes the map, and uh, Alive took that third base that I find actually nowadays to be just slightly questionable. Uh, it's, it's kind of in an irrelevant zone of the map. Uh, to put it for anyone that doesn't uh, didn't watch this morning and wants to understand what I'm saying, Alive took his third base as the bottom left when Zerg was taking their fourth as the mid-right. So if he had taken his third as the mid-right above his main, that's like a rally path. Uh, basically defends both your natural, your main, and your third, all three of them. And you're you have like a staging point to attack the fourth base and pressure it and try to keep it down. Alive plays a more old school style, uh, like a, a style that we would have seen a few months ago before Flash and Innovation really showed kind of pushing towards your opponent with your bases a little bit. So that's something that TLO may be able to abuse in this game, where Alive's attacks are going to be nowhere in the vicinity of his third. So. The, the quick mobility of TLO's very fast Zerglings and possibly Speed Bangs and possibly Mutas uh, can perhaps hit that third and get back somewhere to defend, which is really what Zerg wants. If they can attack somewhere, then go fly across an area or run across creep really quickly to be in another area they shouldn't be in right then, uh, then they can defend the attacks of their opponent as well as be aggressive, and that's exactly what they're looking for. So. Maybe he has a shot against Alive on this map here. Alright, so everything so far looking pretty standard. It's looking like we'll probably be seeing uh, a factory coming up reasonably quick here from Alive. And he already has a good amount of gas there. So, will he go for Hellbat drops again? Uh, you know, I this map... Not my favorite personally for Hellbat drops. It's kind of the three bases are a bit in a line. So it's hard to jaw in between them. Like you can't go from the third to the main real quick. You have to go across the natural. Also, there's not a ton of flying room behind. So it's kind of easy to see them. So I don't know if he's going to be going for that or not. Sometimes people just do it anyways because they're Hellbats. They kill stuff quick, so they're good. But we'll see. So TLO, on the other hand, I wonder if he has a, a, a special type of strategy for this map. I feel like he's going to play pretty standard. Like, I don't think we're going to see Roach Hydra out of him. Uh, it would definitely be fun to see, but I, for some reason I'm not expecting it. I could see him going for some sort of Roach Baneling type play, though, because Alive does play pretty greedy Terran. And when someone plays pretty greedy Terran, you... Ooh, ooh wait a minute. Let me... Okay, there, there's actually a second factory started for Alive. So now we actually know what he's doing, but will TLO figure it out? Uh, the second factory is very important because it looks like it's probably going to be two factory blue flame Hellions. And that's going to be so, so powerful against Zergling base builds. Now, TLO has a really well-placed Overlord down in between the main and the natural. The one thing that he doesn't have is a really well-placed Overlord above the main. He has one that's kind of on the way, so he may be able to pincer in there and see exactly what's going on. But we'll have to see when he chooses a scout, because he still hasn't checked for a second gas yet. And when you see a second gas at that time, and of course, you don't have to see when it goes up. You can click on it, see how much gas it has, and calculate from there how long it's been up. But he needs to see that so he knows that this isn't Quick 3 Command Center. And once he knows it's not quick three command center, then he can decide, oh, I need to sacrifice an overlord to see what's going on, or, oh, I need to just make some roaches or a lot of lings or something like that. Because if he has just lings against two factory blue flame hellion, he's in a lot of trouble. 
All right, so he is taking that third base as alive as scouted. Tilo starting his upgrades for Zerglings. Kind of an interesting Sim City there. That's one little hole. Uh, and he's throwing up the Banely Nest. So he doesn't really know what's going on yet. And this is something that we actually saw as a mistake from Stefano as well. And in fact, in particular on this map against Alive, where he didn't scout him and thus didn't know what type of timing attack was coming, and so he wasn't prepared, lost his third base. Now, here comes the Overlord. Is the Overlord, he hasn't seen those extra Hellions, he hasn't seen the extra factory yet, this is a little bit late, this, this Overlord. He hasn't seen those Hellions yet, this is really, really important. And I think he's seen the second factory now. Yeah, he's seen the second factory, he's throwing up a spine, but this is a lot of Blue Flame Hellions. This is a lot of Blue Flame Hellions. Okay, so he's going towards that third base. He may decide to just kill the third base here, or attempt to kill the third base here. We'll see if TLO can actually hold it, but uh, takes out the Queen, has a few more rally up, and now he's actually going towards the natural. Kind of interesting that he chose to go there, kill a Queen, and go towards the natural. But a nice pin there by TLO, and good Banelink connections. Now that was... I, I didn't really like that choice. I feel like you have to go one way or the other because he gave TLO some time to build up more defense and before he went into the natural. Killing the queen at the third is nice, but I feel like it wasn't as powerful as going to the natural and perhaps doing the same, such as kill a queen. Yes, you would take more damage killing the queen at the natural because there's more firing at you, but you don't even need to necessarily kill the queen. Just look at the situation. Tilo had time to get the right units to hold that. That could have been a lot worse for him, I think, if if uh, Alive had been more decisive in what he wanted to do with that attack. Okay, so, uh, as far as units loss go, we did see that still uh, Alive does have a big lead in that way. You know, Blue Flame Hellions, they're pretty cheap overall. He did kill quite a bit with them. Uh, I guess the more important part in my eyes is he didn't kill many drones. He's killed a total of four drones this game. And that's not a lot for that many Blue Flame Aliens. So we do have the Spire on the way. Uh, Tilo realizing that, okay, you know what? He's He's got two factories. Ground units aren't going to be necessarily the best, but it's really not a bad idea at all to get some quick units out because he's going to be low on Marines. He's put so many minerals and a reasonable amount of gas into getting this many Hellions out. So the Mutas are going to be a very good choice for that reason. Good scouting going on now. Uh, he gets to see the add-ons on the factories. Gets to see the third command center. Uh, so he knows there's not like a follow-up crazy two-base all-in. Not that he would really expect that or anything. And as far as upgrades go, TLO has a big lead in there. Uh, he does have his 2-2 on the way. And ooh, that's a pretty nice surround. He's losing some links, but he's doing okay on the surround so far. A little bit of uh, diminishing returns there towards the end. Almost got him a couple times, but not quite. So, still he's reducing the amount of Blue Flame Hellions, and he doesn't expect for Alive to make any more Blue Flame Hellions uh, this game. So, the more he can reduce those, the better. Uh, basically, the factory needs to be used for other things. He needs mostly Widow Mines, maybe a, a Siege Tank or two. He did make a Siege Tank. Uh, which is actually really smart, just to just in case anything crazy was coming. But he knows that there has to be Widow Mine, so as soon as he gets rid of all the Blue Flame Hellions, which is why you see him continue to attack here, and then target with Mutas first, uh, the map control that they give is gone after that. So TLO is actually about to finish his 2-2, and his Infestation Pit is with pretty good speed here. Bailing speed about to finish, getting a good clump of mutas. His creep spread is looking really nice. I do like how this game is shaping up for TLO. Uh, his fourth base, in fact, is going to be finished in just a moment, whereas Alive isn't mining from his third yet. So everything kind of going in TLO's favor. You know, even though the Blue Flame Hellions were still a little bit efficient, it put everything else behind. And TLO didn't really find, fall behind. Yeah, he lost a lot of mineral-based units, but... You can put up with that with Zerg uh, as you go later into the game. So he's got that Hive coming up, and he's going to be able to continue his tech, which is awesome. And in fact, Pathogen Land's coming up. That tells us that he's going to most likely go into Ultras. 
Uh, I I would be really surprised to see Brood Lords, but some people do choose the Brood Lords because they really mess with Widowmind so well. But I think Ultras would be a great choice for this type of free spread, and we should be seeing that. So Alive's starting to try to uh, get his drop action going, uh, get his multi prong harassment, but. What you can see from TLO is he's actually making, he's made a lot of spores. We saw them just during that drop, and I know he's clearing creep and stuff, but I want to talk about this really badly. He's He has paid attention to what Alive is doing, and he is changing how he's playing against Alive to counter that. He's putting up extra spores because he has realized that Alive, in every TBZ so far, he drops non-stop. It doesn't matter how many Mews you have. He drops non-stop. So, Putting up the spores is going to allow those mutas to not be diverted as much because it's going to deter drops more and it's going to kill medevacs. Two spores will take out a medevac very easily. So this is really intelligent play by TLO, how he's set this up differently than every other Zerg really has today. So we do have that Ultralist Cavern coming. 3-3 three, three has begun, so he's going to remain ahead on upgrades. He's making a lot of lings right now as well. Basically what he needs to do right now is not lose too much. He's going into ultras on four bases. He's got the eight gases. He's taking another base. If he can keep the game where it is for just a little bit longer, he's going to have a gigantic lead. Because he's going to have his ultras coming out. His 3-3 is going to finish up. And he's going to have that superior economy that only Solki has had against uh, Alive so far today. He's doing a great job so far. Uh, just rolling in those bailings. He has the Infestors as well to help out a bit. The supplies is, are staying pretty even, but make no mistake, the longer he holds Alive back, the further ahead TLO is becoming. So he will end up losing that one hatch. Not actually the biggest deal because it's still four base against three base, and that's the most crucial mo thing at this moment. Now he is building his ultras, and as those ultras come out, he's gonna start sweeping up armies, and we're gonna have to see Marauder production from Alive. He has one on the way, but he has to get more tech labs on his barracks. Notice his mutilus count is getting quite a bit lower now. It's hard to keep those alive throughout the game if you're not making any more, which he has, of course, skipped because he is focusing on these other ground-based units. His ground army is going to be very scary very soon. There's only two Marauders on the map. There are 15 Widow Mines and eight Medivacs, though. So it's still, the game isn't over, but I'm, I am liking where TLO is at. Now, we have Alive taking his fourth, and his fourth is gonna be the location from which he can stage the attacks I was talking about before that he could have done from a third, but he's choosing to do it from a fourth, which is fine. But this fourth is the most important thing. If TLO can get in there and bust it, then Alive is in a lot of trouble because he's mining out. Don't forget, Terrans mine out first because of their mules. So his main is gone and his natural is almost gone. He needs this fourth base. So right now TLO waiting. He has that third armor upgrade about to finish. He already has Chitinous plating. And doesn't have the biggest army here. The Infestor a little bit behind. But he is pushing Alive back for now. A nice drop from Alive up there. Really good job dropping the third base and the fifth at the same time. He got the fifth. He's delaying mining at the fourth. This is beautifully done for Alive. But TLO is getting a ridiculously scary army and in fact even getting the Greater Spire. So this is actually turning into a really interesting scenario where we might see TLO do a giant attack that if Alive can stay cost efficient against, uh, he's in a good spot because he just killed two hatchers. Oh, and then that happens. And uh, that's that's a good moment right there for TLO. A live supply just plummets. Uh, he really needs to keep his supply up because the next attack is going to be so powerful from TLO. He's actually about to be at 11 ultras. And he lost some investors there, so he's just going to have these three that he's producing right now. So... Uh, yeah, he lost some bases. His economy's hurt. But this army that he has is vastly superior to the composition of Alive's army. But Alive is pumping out purely Marauders with all his money right now, with some Widow Mines, and his 3-3 is going to finish. So he's going to make it more even soon. And attacking the spawning pool, a perfect choice to pick off right now. 
And Bacteal just starts another knowing that that's going to die. So Tealo seems to be just slightly indecisive right now. He just ran back with a big chunk of his army against that drop that was kind of set up towards the third base of his opponent. Now he has to save these these bases that are being dropped right now. He can't be losing his tech either. Trying to target down that meta back, not really going to work out there. But this is basically live is transitioning perfectly. Tilo was so good against drops earlier on with all the spores and the mutas. But now, as he's transitioned into the more ground-heavy army, the drops become more powerful again because there's not as many mutas to really clean it up. And the power of the Ultralisk, Ling, Baneling, Infestor army is that it's all together. So this is really, really nice by Live. He's really clawing his way right back into this. Uh, even though Tielo got into such a great unit composition, Alive has now bought himself so much time and now he has 23 Marauders, 10 Medivacs, 12 Ludo Mines, and 21 Marines. Really solid. Now, for, uh, for TLO, he has a Viper in there. I'll be interested to see what he does with that. I think we're just going to see a Blinding Cloud, but here we go. This this could be a Decider right here. We have the Widow Mines actually burrowing there. Wow, I think he actually targeted that one. It hit a lot of Banelings. Uh, Alive is down in Supply right now, but a, an army like this, there's a lot of Red Ultras in there, a lot of low hit point Ultras, and not a lot of Lings help tank any damage. So. Uh, good thing he turned around. If he had attacked up into that choke, Alive could have definitely out microed in there and been super cost efficient against the Ultras. Okay, so still trying to get some drops down. You know, the Viper could be maybe for a little bit of drop defense too to pull the, the Metavacs back in. I'm not exactly sure. I never really see someone get one like this. Uh, against this type of army composition, so I'm pretty excited. TLO is really clever. But I think during the battle, it'll probably end up being a blinding cloud. Abduct, not really that good for like one Marauder. Um, <laughs> well, this army is still very scary for TLO. He's refueling it quite a bit, getting some more Infestors in there. You know, it's becoming a more scrappy game. Oh, and he actually uses the Abduct on that one Medivac. Uh, not sure that he actually had enough anti-air damage there to really kill it, but... Looks like he will deal with these drops for now. Again, the drops... Are, these are doing a great job. These are just really keeping him busy. And during all of this, Alive is... A, ooh, that was a nice abduct. I like that. Uh, but during all of this, Alive has actually secured his fort. So, right now, TLO... Uh, and look at that. He actually... The spawning pool has to go down. Really well done. Uh, but this is so nice by Alive, because now he's maxed out. He's bought all this time with all these drops against the unit composition that f goes weak against drops, because TL was super strong against drops, goes into the later game composition that's weak, he starts dropping everywhere, picks off hatcheries, picks off tech, keeps TLO busy while TLO has a much better army, and now Al Alive's army is really good, so... Uh, looking better and better for him the entire time. Now, a pretty good blinding cloud going down. Some good fungals as well. The Ultras starting to push through. Don't forget, TLO's army is still very scary, but this is some really nice micro coming down. And, in fact, this is a planetary, so this is the one situation where Alive can be really efficient. Looks like the Ultras definitely will clean this up. But taking a look at everything after that, I mean, he is attacking back up towards that fourth. He's taking out the hatchery at the third base again. Alive is doing a great job here. And in fact, I mean, as far as unit composition goes, uh, I do put it probably slightly in TLO's favor because he has so many Infestors and Ultras still on the way, and he's, he actually retained all his uh, Infestors in that last battle. But his economy is going down very low, just like Alive's. In fact, neither player is really mined right now. So now we're in one of those crazy long games that you see on Belcher Vestige every now and then. Uh, there's been quite a few this WCS season in fact. But now it's about who can be more cost efficient because it's so scrappy, they both have so little. And taking a look at it, okay, so the really efficient units of Alive, six Medivacs, nine Widow Mines. For TLO, seven Infestors, one Viper. By the way, Taylor's down to 14 drones. It's pretty rough. But over time, 
TLO's army should be able to win because of fungals, uh, because they, they're really cost efficient over time, you know, hold everything down and whatnot. But, you know, in like one, if he goes and does one engagement, it is going to be pretty hard to kill a life's army. Uh, and the thing is, he can't wait very long because he is down to 14 drones. He's not really mining. Whereas, Alive can lift command centers and land them in places and drop mules. So, pretty rough. A nice blinding cloud going down, but, you know, Alive, I feel like, is being efficient enough. You know, he's... Ooh, that was a really nice fungal right there. But, Alive still has 10 more Marauders, or a little bit less than that now. Four Ultras, seven Infestors left. Still kind of close, but with the seven Widow Mines as well, yeah, I think I think Alive is going to end up uh, being able to take this game. You know, Tielo's re-expanding to his third, which is not the most mineral healthy area, so even once he gets that up, it's only going to, you know, get his economy going for a little bit. But Alive really isn't mining, so he has to somehow get in here and actually be cost-efficient against that. Oh, this is a smart way to do it, right? So he has command centers on both sides, and may as well go mine from the other one if your unit's over there, and then once those units move, he can mine from that one on that side. The thing is, is being equally smart by having Overlords there. And, ooh, that's a really nice snipe. Oh my god, two investors going down is so rough, and a lot of damage dealt to that one, uh... One ultra. But, uh, Teal's being really smart, as I was saying, dropping creep there, because then you have to commit marines over there, and as soon as you know where some of the marines are, you can go clear that up, because they're both so low in supply. There's another nice little attack here. Alive sending out just a few marines to hurt even more of the drone economy, and it looks like this is it. GG. Really well played game by both sides. Very interesting, that one. Uh, you know, TLO, he played very well. He, I actually, I felt like he was in the lead a few times there. He shut down the early drops extremely efficiently. Uh, he got into his Ultralist tech off four bases without taking any real damage. But Alive's drop play really carried him through there. If it wasn't for his endless drops everywhere, TLO definitely would have taken that because he would have uh, basically secured the fifth base with like full ground upgrades against what was basically a three base Terran. So, uh, Alive really played fantastically. That was definitely Alive's best game of the day, in my opinion. Because um, that, that definitely could have gone to TLO otherwise if he wasn't completely all over the map, dropping everywhere. And that means TLO, unfortunately, for his many, many fans out there, is out of this tournament. Uh, second to last in his group, third place, I guess you would call that. Uh, and the two Korean players do advance. So that is going to be Alive going up, and of course Solki in first place just crushing through this group. Uh, Tilo, a huge amount of improvement in this WCS season. Can't wait to see what he can do next season as well. Would not be surprised if he did make it back to the next seasonal finals as well. Now, for Alive, how deep can he get in this tournament? You know, he's. He's a Terran player with a lot of responsibility. EG, uh, not really known for having a deep Terran line, so he's had a lot of stage experience recently, a lot in that OGN studio, so maybe he can play his best and really carry himself through. Uh, so that's it for Group A. Uh, Sulky and Live going up, and uh, that's, that's pretty much it, I guess. Uh, I'll be switching places with Wolf and Caldor. I think we're switching streams. Uh, I'll, I'll tweet about it and let everyone know. Make sure to follow me on Twitter. I am at Artosis. And let's go ahead and take a quick look at the match results before, before I get out of here. Sulky and Alive do advance. Tilo and Stefano, unfortunately, both out. That leaves us one foreigner. Damaga is left. And that cleans up Group A. And as far as Group B, Looks like they are actually still... Uh, nope, it looks like Alicia won in the winner's bracket. Okay. Uh, and as far as the loser's bracket, MVP is awaiting the winner of Kang Ho and Ryong, which I'm sure is going on right now. Make sure you check that stream out. Wolf and Caldor are casting that at the moment. I'm sure it's quite exciting. So, uh, the Group C that is going to be on main stage is going to be Hero, 4GG, SOS and Symbol. My favorite group. I'm not sure if I'll be casting that or not. 
And then, of course, there will be Group D coming up a little bit later as well. And that's the one that has Damaga in it, as well as Revival, Roro, and Innovation. Another one Terran, three Zerg group. So, uh, yeah, that's... That is it for right now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and rest my voice. And I think it's going to be about 30 minutes before we start the next group. So uh, go get yourself some lunch or something. Big cheers to the crowd. You guys have been fantastic. Made me feel not quite so lonely up here. And uh, thank you everyone for watching. And don't go too long because we'll be right back.